Equity markets bounced in May, and this has split investors into two camps. The optimists think that this is a turning point and we're just going to see rallies from here on out, whereas pessimists think this might be a bear market rally, just a short-term reprieve during a longer-term downtrend in equity. Now, I don't think this is a helpful way of looking at markets. I think there's a much better way of looking at it. So let's look at that in a bit more detail. What is a bear market? Well, the correction is a 10% fall from the previous all-time high. And you can see that the S&P, shown here in blue, and the Nasdaq, shown in red, got there pretty early in the year. So in fact, both of them went into a correction in January. And by the time we got to March, the Nasdaq was already in a bear market. It was down 20% relative to its peak. Now, the S&P hasn't actually got to a bear market yet, but it's not too far away. I think it was about 19% down peak to trough so far this year. Now, what's a bear market rally? Well, a reasonable definition is that it's a short, sharp rebound during one of those long-term bear markets. In other words, the market hasn't turned around yet. It's got further to fall after the rally. Now, the mother of all stock market crashes occurred in 1929 to 1933, and this was also the time of the Great Depression. Now, I've had to use an index which I don't usually touch. It's the Dow Jones. I can't say it, but you know what it is. You can read what it is. But peak to trough, the Dow fell by 90% during that period. But look at these huge rallies there were all the way down. For example, this first rally was 48% from the bottom to the top, and it lasted five months. Just imagine how investors felt as the market suddenly swooned again after reaching that top and then carried on falling after that. Then we got rallies of 23%, 28%, 35%, 25%. And then we finally reached the bottom in 1932. So there are lots of these false dawns before we really reach the bottom. Now, there are also many examples of bear market rallies with the S&P. So here's the sell-off that occurred for the S&P between 1973 and 1975. And markets fell about 50% from the top to the bottom. But notice that there were some very sharp rallies. I've only marked the ones which are more than 5% here. So one was 8%, one was 11. We had one for 7, 8, 7, 6, 5. And then we finally got to the bottom at the end of 1974. The dot-com bubble bursting between 2000 and 2003 was of a similar magnitude. Again, about a halving of the S&P. But the size and the intensity of these rallies were much bigger. So initially there was a 12% rally, then we had a few little ones, 8%, 9%. But then we got this huge 19% rally in the spring of 2001, and another substantive rally of over 20% at the end of 2001. And then the final false dawn was in the summer of 2002, which was a 21% rally. Then again, in the global financial crisis, 2007 to 2009, overall, this was an even bigger fall. This was 57% peak to trough. And the two largest rallies during that period was the one of about 12% in 2008. And then at the end of 2008, there was another 24% rally. So you can imagine once you'd reached 2009, you were very much punch drunk with all of these false hopes that were raised by these huge rallies, only to see the market collapse again. So of course, nobody knew that things would improve. But in fact, that's the turning point. It was in March of 2009. So given those precedents, we can now turn to the rally in 2022 and ask, was it a bear market rally? Now, strictly speaking, it can't be a bear market rally because we haven't had a bear market for the S&P yet. But putting that aside, we've already had some bear market rallies. So for example, in January, we had a 6% rally and then in March, we had another 11% rally. But neither of those marked a really big turnaround for the S&P because it carried on selling off. And that sell-off continued during April and May. And only until we got to May 19th did we get that big bounce, which was around 7%. So now we have to ask the question, is that the market bottom? Before we go on to discuss whether this is or isn't a market bottom, let me quickly mention our membership, which is available on our website, pensioncraft.com, where you'll get access to all kinds of goodies, such as our Slack application, so that you can talk to me and other members of the community anytime you like, plus a growing library of members-only content, which you could vote for. 
So if you want to learn more about that, just go to the link beside me and in the description beneath me. To gauge whether this really was a substantive rally and a turnaround point for the S&P, whether it was just a bear market rally, I think we have to look at the reasons behind why equity rose. And in fact, I think there are still lots of reasons to be positive about the equity market in 2022. For example, corporate earnings in Q1 of 2022 were not amazing, but they were pretty good. That will provide a backstop to how far the equity market will fall. Also, if you look at the long-term perspective, if you have to raise money in the corporate bond market, the all-in yields are still pretty low. Spreads are widening, risk-free rates are increasing, but still, it's pretty cheap to get funding. Also, the US jobs market has been incredibly resilient. In fact, that's one of the reasons why the Fed's worried, because of the very tight labour market. But it's still a positive and keeps the US from falling into recession. Also, while inflation's remained high, if you look at the five-year, five-year forward rate of inflation, so that's the expectation of inflation five years in the future, that actually peaked in April. And that suggests that the Fed is actually still credible. I think that's a positive. And of course, because equity prices have fallen, they're now more reasonably priced, so you'll get higher returns long term. Now, we're all familiar with the negative reasons. The first one, obviously, is that inflation is very high, above 8% in the United States, and it's been there for some time. The Fed, of course, is tightening its monetary policy, so quantitative tightening is something we haven't seen for some time, and that's generally a negative for equity markets. Many people are now expecting a recession, although we haven't really seen signs of one yet. And we're still seeing supply chain disruptions and the lockdowns in China are going to have ripple effects all across the world, particularly for those supply chains. And then, of course, we've got geopolitical instability. Russia's invasion of Ukraine is continuing. But the key point is that none of these factors changed substantively when markets turned around. There wasn't any one catalyst which made people suddenly think, oh, equity is now a bargain. For example, if inflation had fallen to, say, even 6%, I could see a reason why equity would rally. But that didn't happen. So really, there is no reason why equity rallied. It was simply because we'd had lots of equity market falls and some people saw a buying opportunity. However, if there isn't a catalyst, I don't think that rally has legs. So in my opinion, for what it's worth, I think this is a bear market rally. But whether this is a bear market rally or not, who cares? I've marked on some of those bear market rallies here in this top panel since 1973 for the S&P. So the starting point of the bear market is in red and the end point is in blue. But the problem is that you can't identify those bear market rallies until you know the bear market's ended. And the only way to do that is for markets to recover. So at the low point, there's no way you could know that you're at the bottom. So I think this is a fool's errand. I think it's pointless to decide whether you're at a market bottom, since you'll never know. You can have an opinion about it, but what's that worth? And that's why I think valuation is much more useful, because what you can do is see whether you're bagging a bargain. And you don't have to use information which isn't available from the future to gauge whether you've got that bargain. Equity's got this built-in price gauge, many of them in fact, which tell you whether it's cheap or expensive. One of them is called the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio created by Robert Schiller, where you take the price of the index today and divide by the previous decade's profits or earnings. When that's low, equity's cheap and it's a buying opportunity. And when it's high, equity's expensive and usually you get lower returns over the next five or 10 years. So if we look at the median value or the typical value of CAPE, that's around 20, 21. And that's marked with this horizontal red line. And when we're above it, equity's expensive. And when we're below it, equity is cheap. So, for example, during that entire period of the late 70s and early 80s, that was a screaming buy according to this valuation measure. And sure enough, if you look at the returns after that period, it was a steady increase. It would have been a great time to buy. Whereas the lead up to the dot com bubble, equity market valuations just went kind of crazy and you'd have got awful returns for the next decade. In fact, the SP pretty much went nowhere. And the valuation measure was telling you that. And then in 2009, when equity markets sold off by 57%, you can see that that again was an incredible buying opportunity. 
according to this valuation measure. And that would have given you great returns over the next decade. And if we look at that measure right now, it's not so great. You can see that equity, according to CAPE, is still pretty expensive. So whether this is a market bottom or not, you can still see that now is not an incredible buying opportunity. It still probably makes sense to drip feed into markets, but I wouldn't put in a huge lump sum at this point if I had that money to allocate. But it's good to look at other valuation measures. Here's another one from Robert Schiller, which is called the excess Cape yield. Notice that now the axes are flipped on the bottom panel. So cheap is when you're above the line and expensive is when you're below the line. But again, notice how in the 1970s and 80s, that was flagging that markets were cheap, which was true. During the dot-com bubble in 2000, it was flagging that equity was expensive, also true. And during 2009, again, it was flagging markets were cheap. Now, recently, we've seen real yields increase very rapidly at the beginning of 2022. Markets have sold off, but not enough to make markets cheap. In fact, if anything, markets have actually got more expensive, according to the excess Cape yield. So by this measure, again, markets are not cheap. They're a little bit expensive. Another valuation measure I really like is called the forward price to earnings ratio. And what we're doing here is dividing the price of the S&P by the forecast profits of companies in the index. So this includes all available information because brokers have that information. So any kind of optimism about the future or pessimism is kind of priced in and it's forward looking. So the value of the S&P right now, as I make this video, is 41.32. And I've marked on where the average price to earnings ratio over the last five years would put us. So we're 7% below that. So we are cheap based on that measure. But if we look at the 10 year average, the rally that we've just had has put us above that. So if we went to that average, we'd fall by about 3%. But the long term average for the S&P 500 is a multiple of about 15 times. And that's 14% below where we are today. So are we at fair value for the S&P right now? According to this measure, no, we'd have to fall by another 14%. And then if we got into depressed pricing, what we usually get during a crisis, in COVID, we got down to a multiple of 13 times, which is 25% below where we are today. That would be an S&P level of 3085. And if we got to really depressed valuations where we were for the global financial crisis, that would be another 50% fall from where we are today. So all we can really say is that equity is not particularly expensive or cheap at the moment. And according to this measure, I'd say it's a little bit above fair value. In conclusion then, are we in a bear market right now? Personally, I think yes, we are. I think equity markets have got further to fall. And the reason why I say that is that there are no catalysts. If inflation had peaked and then fallen substantively, then sure, there would be a rally for a good reason. But really, none of the big drivers of markets in 2022 have really changed. So that's why I think this rally doesn't have legs. But the conceptual problem with a bear market rally is that it requires information from the future. You only know it's a bear market rally once markets recover. So I don't think it's useful to even wonder about whether that's the case. We have a much better approach to investing, which is to use valuations. Effectively, equities will tell you when they're cheap. So that's a much better indicator and it doesn't require information from the future. Sure, you'd use multiple valuation measures. Sometimes it's not really clear cut. But if we look at valuations right now, we look at markets in the US and they're a little bit expensive, not quite at fair value. So it probably still makes sense to drip feed into markets. But if I've got extra cash to invest, would I pile into the equity markets right now? Probably not. So don't beat yourself up about not knowing whether we're at a market bottom. Nobody does. And in fact, it's irrelevant anyway. What's much more important is to use valuation because that'll tell you when you're bagging a bargain and valuations right now are kind of okay, but a little bit expensive. Now, don't forget our offer of our membership. Go to pensioncraft.com to join us. And if you want to learn more about that, just click on the link beside me and in the description beneath me. And as always, Thank you for listening.